Greetings, beautiful souls. It's Monday, which means it's time for our weekly check-in. I'm Goddess Susie. You're radiant. I am so emotional right now. Vibrant and sexy-ass host of the Divine Empowerment Podcast. In honor of my daughter's memory, I've created a legacy of love, which is a foundation that is committed to spreading love, joy, and kindness 24-7, 365 days a year. And, you know, I really want to be able to mentor and assist people along on their journey, you know. Um, I no longer have my baby here with me physically. But I would like to impact the lives of some other teenagers, you know. Um, I, you know, I, some days I think I'm okay. And I know that I am okay. I know I'm going to be okay. I know I'm going to get through this. Some days are harder than others. And, um, you know, uh, the Divine Empowerment Podcast was created to share my stories of overcoming self doubt, depression, anxiety, and panic attacks. Um, you know, and it's overcoming, you know, past trauma, all that stuff through the healing and transformative power of self-love. And today I want to talk about anger and mental health. And, you know, a lot of people ask, why isn't my daughter's death affecting me like they think it's supposed to affect me. And see, you can't explain spirituality to people who are steeped in religion because, you know, the war that we fight is not with human flesh. It never has been. The war that we fight is spiritual and it's between our own egos and our own soul. But the thing is, is that so many people believe that they're fighting entities outside of themselves when really it's just themselves. So am I angry that my daughter is dead? Hell yeah. Hell yeah, I'm angry. But I'm not about to go and get a gun and kill anybody. I'm not about to go and beat anybody's ass. I'm not about to sit up here and yell and cuss and scream. Because that solves nothing. And what I've learned about energy after leaving my unhealthy and abusive relationship with my children's father is that my energy is my greatest currency. And when you are vibrating at the highest frequency of love, your light shines very bright. And that was my daughter. My daughter's light shined. And unfortunately, there are still people out there who believe that they are warring with her light or my light. When really, they're warring with their own light inside of them. I and me and Aaliyah are nothing but reflections of the shit that they need to work on within themselves. But because they don't want to do that, they try and dim your light. And you know, I've been trying to get out more and get into nature because you know, when you get into nature, you know, you are, you feel more connected. I do at least. And today it was like, you know, my children at one point in this journey, because I realized that 
you know, people will try to use anything that they possibly can against you or to get to you, right? To make you stop doing what you're doing, you know, because because I am in this position that I'm in and I'm bringing awareness and I'm spreading the love and I'm talking about self-love and talking about healing, there are people who don't like this and really it's nothing more than an energy it is the lower vibrational energy that does not want healing to come forth in this world and healing only comes through love right so yeah I absolutely can get angry right but then what is that solving it's not solving anything right you don't meet anger with anger you don't meet hate with hate You meet hate with love. And that's what I'm doing. Do I want justice for my daughter? Absolutely. Because why wasn't there a, any charges brought? That was vehicular homicide. Unless something else happened out there that we don't know about. And, you know, where where Aaliyah went to school from third to eighth grade. While it is a area that is predominantly non-colored people, there are people out there that do believe in spreading love and kindness and they don't su- support racism. But then you have people out there that still do support racism and separation and hate. And, you know, it could possibly be a cover up. I don't know. And that's the thing. We weren't out there, you know. And as much as I allowed my daughter freedom, being out there and trick-or-treating and knowing, you know, that, yeah, people do weird shit on Halloween right even if I did know or interact with the parents of the children that my daughter was trick-or-treating with I still didn't leave my daughter out there for Halloween no Halloweens and we we had did this what this might have this might have been the fourth year that she trick-or-treated with them I didn't leave her out there. And because I didn't have a car, she wasn't going. And you know, I can... I can go back and forth on what I should have did, what I shouldn't have did. But none of that is going to bring my daughter back. I can be angry and go whoop the woman's ass. But none of that is going to bring my daughter back. And it's a temporary satisfaction. I might get temporary satisfaction afterwards, but, you know, then then I'm going to jail. And, you know, yeah, I probably will be smiling in my mugshot, but, you know, I'm not going through that. What I'm going to do is use Aaliyah's death as my strength because she was my strength here while she was on earth. You know, like I said, there was one point in this journey that I had to really get my thoughts together, right? And I think it might have been around 2018, 2019, where I was like, I really do have to make my children my strength because I was fearing, you know, that something would happen to them or this or that, you know, like kind of like always looking over my shoulders. And I was like, I got to flip the script on this, right? Because 
if something does happen to my kids and they're my weakness, then that will shatter my whole world. You know, same thing goes with a relationship. You don't have to lose yourself to be in a relationship, you know, lose your identity, you know, and I don't, I don't have to lose me because Aaliyah is no longer here because Aaliyah is still here. You know, that was a physical body, you know, and it's like, I got this revelation today that she was powerful. She was powerful at the age of 14 here in this spirit, in this earthly realm, which means she's even more powerful in the spiritual realm. And now she's my guardian angel. But energy does not die. Energy is transferred. And I'll always have her with me because she was a part of me, just like she's a part of her brother. You know, and I'm so thankful that I had two children. And I'm thankful that Aaliyah was the baby. Because I have an older version of her and her brother. You know, so many things that they say, they say like each other, you know, when he was at the funeral, he was like, I feel like my sister is my yin, the yin to my yang. She, you know, like we like two peas in a pod and him just being here is helping me even more with my healing because they were really two peas in a pod. Like, and every time he say something, I say, he used to say the same thing. The same thing. Of course, she had her own personality and her own spin on it but it's the same saying like she is so much of her brother <laughs> it's not even funny but it's a blessing <laughs> because I may not have her here physically to hear her version of it or how she would say it <laughs> but I have her here in him and that gives me strength. You know, and, and like I said before, I don't fight battles on this earthly realm. I fight battles in the spiritual realm. And that's why every live will be praise music until I get my my um my colored singing bowls, because then it's just gonna be a healing session. That's it. Because this is not going to stop me, you know. And a lot of times the attacks come, you know. Tragedy strikes, you know. And, you know, if it was genuinely an accident, not premeditated, you know. Because if you truly believe that Aaliyah's timeline was at the age of 14, then you'll accept it as an accident, right? But then there's this other part of you, this intuitive part of you that says something doesn't sit right. Something's not right about this whole situation. And you begin to take the necessary actions and lock arms with the necessary people to do what you need to to do right because why weren't there any charges filed is it because the woman uh is husband works for the government you know there are so many questions but you know like i told my mom i'm not going to you know you'll drive yourself crazy sitting up here 
asking why or, um, you know, overthinking things, right? The best course of action is just to sit and be still because the answers will come. Intuition will tell you the next action to take, the next step to take. But see, when you're not connected spiritually, then you don't understand how to fully process pain. You know, and what I was saying is that, you know, no, I'm going, I'm an alchemist. I alchemize pain and anger. So I'm going to take all of my anger and I am going to pour it into my creativity. And this is what I taught my daughter while she was here on earth. And that's why her light shines so brightly at the age of 14. Because no, you don't have to cuss people out, revenge people. You don't have to, you you know what I'm saying? Like you don't have to have the upper hand. You toss all of that anger into your projects, into your dance. And if you're pissed off about your father not showing up, throw it into your dance. Throw it into that, that acting. It's called alchemy. And a lot of people don't understand how to alchemize their pain, their anger. So they project it onto others. They take it out on other people. And that's that's what I teach at a Mother's Touch LLC. You know, my classes are energy therapy. You know, when you dance, you shake off all of that anger, all of that stress, all of that pain. When you you know, are doing artistic things. You know, I used to tell that to Aaliyah too, let's craft. You know, if she was having an emotion, you know, this was when she was younger, but let's craft. Let's do some crafts if you, you know, going through some emotions. No, there are healthy ways to, to transform that anger or alchemize that anger. And, And what I told, you know, my best friend of, 25 plus years is that you know people who are hurting and hateful they want you to give them that same energy and I only match positive energy energy that's going to help me to evolve higher in the spiritual realm you know because I'm not really trying to evolve in this earthly realm you know Cause my soul is evolving spiritually, you know, that's why people like you look the same, nothing, you know, you know, nothing seems to have changed. No, but spiritually it's different. There's a strength, a power, you know, that you gain by being divinely connected. And, you know, like I told my neighbor, you know, she was like, I would be on the floor. I said, and that's what grief wants. Grief wants you to succumb to it. Grief wants you to stop your life. Grief wants you to shut the fuck up. To bow down to it. What is the definition of grief? What are the synonyms attached to grief? Let's look that up. Mm, mm, Misery. Sadness. Agony. Affliction. Hmm. Hmm. Wow. So if grief is misery, and we all know that misery loves company, why would we let it tear us apart? And I get it. Believe me, I get it. Had this been me 
10 years ago, I would have succumbed to that grief. But I know, and, and this is why I say, like, you know, a part of my brain knows the spiritual aspect of this thing, right? That God prepared me for this, this. And I say that with everything that I had been through. God allowed me, or the universe allowed me, or source energy, or whatever it is that you resonate with, allowed me to spend the time with my daughter that I did because her existence on this earth was going to be short. I didn't know that. But something in me from the time that she was born wanted to do things differently. I wanted to be at home with her. And I, I, I don't know. I can't explain it. You know, the spiritual things are unexplainable. And this is why a lot of people will never get to that point in their spiritual journey because they question every freaking thing. And sometimes you just got to know and look at it from a spiritual standpoint. And that's where, you know, even though I have the thoughts of, you know, well, why wasn't the woman charged and, you know, was this a setup? You know, things of that nature. But I don't dwell on that so much because then that would cause a whole spin out. So what I'm saying is that, you know what? Everything has led, everything in my life has led me to this place here. Because otherwise, why, why was I so hell bent on spending more time with this child and being a healthier version of myself than I was when, when I had my son? And then the things that happened along the way, you know, like I said, you know, when we moved into this when we first found this community of people, you know, I st we were staying in an a Airbnb and it was just for like the weekend or something like that. And from the outside of this place, you would never know that it was a hidden gem on the inside. And so when I pulled up, I was like, okay, this is decent. You know, it, it's decent. But when you get into the inside, there's, it's like a beautiful sanctuary, right? I've spent some time at an, at an ashram in Virginia called Yogaville, you know, where they practice observing silence. And, and you know, I even went on a few silent retreats. Um, but, you know, you get here, there's a beautiful courtyard. It's like, it's, when I tell you, it's like, an, I called it a healing garden. <laughs> I think my, my original email, let's see if I can find my original e email. Hold on, let me see. That I sent. And this was in April. <laughs> um, let me see if I can find my messages. <clears throat> it's been a long time. So then a lot of messages come. Give me a second because I can find it. But, you know, our analytical minds have to question everything, right? And I'm not saying don't. That's not what I'm saying at all. But when you get into this spiritual journey, a lot of things change. A lot of things change and, you know... A lot of things are really spiritual. You know. Okay, here we go. And the title of my email was leasing information. It says, hello all. I wanted to say hello and tell you how much I love this community. Although I haven't had the opportunity to meet anyone personally. I'm currently renting a flat through Airbnb, but I noticed two empty flats on my walk to the laundry facility today and wanted to know if anyone in the group had any information they could provide. 
Um, I also noticed in the messages that another one will be empty on May 1st. My name is Ayana, but I prefer Susie, and I'm a single mother of a very well-behaved and respectable almost 14-year-old daughter. I'm also a college student who will be attending NCCU in the fall, and I'm looking for an affordable place for us to stay in Durham. The gated community, peaceful surroundings, pool location, and area that uh, this place offers is what I'm looking for in a home. I reached out to the community email for information and, and they graciously granted me access to the community message board to reach out to the residents to see if anyone can provide assistance. I also reached out to the lovely Airbnb host who rented this quiet little flat to myself and my daughter for the weekend. Any information that anyone can provide is greatly appreciated and I thank you in advance. I took some time to enjoy the tranquility of the courtyard this morning, but maybe we'll see some of you this afternoon or evening while we're out and about exploring the area. Once again, thank you for any information you can provide. And so, like, I I got an, an enormous response. Like, when I tell you it was like the universe has set it up, did I know that I would need this healing space? Not for this. But I'm always open to healing because I know that that's the journey now, you know. But like I said, and that was in April. And within weeks, we got a place, right? And this happened to Aaliyah in October, but we've been here since May. That gave me four months. Four months to prepare my heart <laughs> because even though I have a spiritual foundation I have a connection with the divine source energy that doesn't mean it still doesn't hurt It doesn't mean that I don't want my daughter here. <laughs> it simply means that when I am in pain, when I am experiencing grief, I tap into the wisdom and my connection to divine source energy before I go calling my mama or my sister or even my son for that matter. I grieve. And you know, the other day he was crying and I was like, you know, he was like, I'm tired of crying. I said, that's the way you heal though. That's how you heal. You gotta let it out. You know, and, and every emotion that you're feeling, whether it's regret or whatever acknowledge that process it you know but don't hold just don't beat yourself up for you know not being here more don't do that to yourself you know don't go back to the past and say man if if I had a, not been holding a grudge with my mom I could have saw my sister more because we all do it at some point in our life, right? We, we shut people out because of hurt and pain. We get angry and then something happens. Tragedy strikes. And then we are, we got all these regrets. Woulda, coulda, shoulda. But you can't beat yourself up. You can't. You can't do it. And that's why it's important to be grounded spiritually. So that when things like this happen, 
or any type of tragedy, any type of grief that you may experience happens. It doesn't shatter your whole entire world. You know, you have your moments of grief and then you get back up, you know, and that's what I was telling him, you know, you know, he was like, oh, I just want to lay in the bed and I say it rest. Your body needs that, right? That's what depression is. It's it's calling your body to a deep rest. There's nothing wrong with that. But get back up the next day. And I, I, I told him, I find that when I rest, when I do absolutely nothing sometimes, the next day I'm more creative. The next day I knock out more things, you know. Even while processing this grief, you know. And I'm not going to say anymore. You know, when people say I'm strong, I am. I am. I'm not going to downplay my strength anymore. I'm not going to do it anymore. Because I am. But I didn't get here by myself. The only reason. While I am able to get back up continuously after being knocked down so many times. Is because God, the universe, divine source energy is my anchor. That's the only reason why. That's what I put my hope, my trust, and my faith in. Is divine source energy. Whether you believe it or not, that's, it. that's between you and your soul and your spirit. But me and my soul and my spirit, we good over here. No matter what we're going through. Because that's what I cling to. You know, and an anchor prevents you from drowning. Let's see what the definition is. Hmm. A person or thing that provides stability or confidence in an otherwise uncertain situation. Mm, my cornerstone, my foundation. <laughs> I'm stable. My mental health is stable. My emotions are stable. My spirituality is stable. Because I made God my foundation. I made God my cornerstone. I made God my anger. <laughs> and whenever I feel like I'm drowning in this pain, You know what I do? I say, God, I need you. God, I love you. <laughs> if this was something that was planned, I know that it was planned for evil it was planned as a way to shut me up stop talking about psychological abuse stop talking about self love stop talking about healing but they only made it worse now that my daughter's gone I, I can say whatever the fuck I want to say I can do whatever the fuck I want to do because I have nobody's image or reputation to protect. So now I can become all the way bold. I can become all the way courageous and shine in the light of the glory of the most high. The highest vibrational energy. 
which is love. And that's where I'm fighting in the spiritual realm against my own self. Because see, again, I don't fight with flesh and blood. I fight with my own shadow and my own spirit. But because I have learned to love them both and I know how to use each one accordingly, I am a balanced individual. I am whole and complete. And while yes, I may experience hardship and tribulation and tragedy and grief, God will always lift me up out because I stand on that anchor. And now, shit is about to get all the way bold. You thought I was bold before. You thought I was God, Godfident before. You haven't seen anything yet. Because like I said, my daughter was powerful in this earthly realm. <laughs> so y'all didn't do anything but send her back to the greatest power in the spiritual realm. And just like she assisted me here in her physical presence, she's going to assist me in the spiritual realm. So again, if this was a premeditated plan, The weapon formed, but it will not prosper. You see, a lot of people will see that as prospering. Baby, death, you know, when you're afraid of death, you think of it as the worst thing. But death is really your ticket to freedom. If you haven't lived a free life, which Aaliyah did on this earth, she was free in her energy. And that's what pissed a lot of people off, too, because she was only 14 and she was free living her life. Not afraid of anybody. And God forbid we all recognize our power and our true strength. Whatever will they do with their sin? We will be a force to be reckoned with. But we think we got to fight with our fists. When we really should be fighting with our own flesh and spirit. And strengthening our spirit man. And denying our flesh. that's all I got for y'all today let me go ahead and do these cards thank you my guardian angel the most powerful guardian angel that I could ever have by my side I love you Lee I miss you but I know you got my back same way I had yours here I know you got my back in the spiritual realm. And I'm thankful for ancestors and ascended masters and angels of light. Thankful and grateful for clear and concise messages through the cards today. And I'm thankful and grateful that the messages will resonate with who they were meant to me resonate with. Thankful for the direction for this journey of our lives. I'm thankful for your love, your support. Show me where to go, what to do, and what to say. There's no fear. No one I have to hold back for now anyway. So let me let loose in your name. I ask for all of these things. And I thank you. And so be it, so it is. Amen.
All right, let's get this messages out so we can close it off. Three cards, like we always do, they go one. two and three all right those came quickly didn't they gentleness sensitivity Ooh, and clear cognizance so that is so funny mm -hmm. sensitivity and gentleness wow hmm. sensitivity archangel haneel you are extra sensitive to energies and emotions right now honor yourself and your feelings and that's what it's about you know, honoring my feelings, honoring my emotions. You have to, you absolutely have to. If you're going to get through any hard time, you cannot mask them. You cannot cover them up. You have to be honest with yourself and honor yourself. It's okay. You're grieving. Just like I told my son. If you got to cry every day, cry every day. You're probably going to. I cry every day. And then I get up and I knock shit out. Every day I cry. Every day. There's not a day that has not gone by that I have not cried. Sometimes I do allow myself to to be in the bed and rest when I'm feeling those emotions but your emotions and your feelings are valid even the anger but again with anger stress and frustration don't project that dump it into creative resources journaling writing singing dancing acting art alchemize it the energies we really want to be putting out is gentleness kindness goodness joy I'm not saying don't be angry I'm not saying don't be frustrated I'm not saying don't stress what I'm saying is don't allow it to consume you because that keeps you in the lower vibrational energies and both are needed but the lower vibrational energy is needed sparingly in order for our planet to heal from this generational curse of racism and hatred we all have to vibe higher in love but it starts with the self you cannot do it through anybody else but yourself. It starts with you. Every relationship. Gentleness. Archangel Sandalphon. Be very gentle with yourself at this time. Surround yourself with gentle people, situations, and circumstances. Oh, I'm sorry. And environments. Yes. Yes. And I'm thankful for this community. You know, like I said, when we first got here, I was like, this is like a ashram. It's like a healing community. And, and, and you never could have told me that I would need this community because of my daughter's death. But when I tell you this community has stepped up and shown their love and kindness, I'm grateful to be here. Today is probably the first day that I'm going to have to cook me a meal. And that's only because I had already bought the ingredients yesterday. And my neighbor emailed me and said, she got the meal for me. When do I want it? So I told her tomorrow because I'm already cooking today. But that's how we're supposed to be, you know. And I, I got my thank you cards. I'm going to give them out to them on um, Friendsgiving because we're having a Friendsgiving celebration um, but yeah that's what it's about community you know but you can't have community when you got selfish hearts so 
find yourself a community where you can be gentle with yourself and gentle with others and you know you can just spread love joy and kindness 24 7 365 days a year that's what's going to get us out of this colonialism capitalism racism hatred because the higher we rise in love the more we subdue or push down or abolish those lower vibrational energies and then the last card is clear cognizance archangel uriel pay attention to thoughts and ideas that come to you as they are answered prayers and that's what i said earlier you know so many people don't listen to their spiritual guidance and so they act they react from a place of anger and stress and frustration and it's like no I'm going to use my anger. I'm going to pour that into my healing practice. And I'm going to wait for the answers that I need. And when the universe says move, I move. When the universe tells me to go obtain this, I obtain that. Now, because a lot of times we do things out of our frustration, our anger, our resentment, our bitterness. But practicing the pause. My God. That, that has been the greatest gift on my journey because I used to go from zero to 100 quick. And, and a lot of the times I'm like, I'm thankful, right? I'm thankful I didn't have a car because who knows what would have happened that night in the emotional state that I was in. I probably would have retaliated or something, not thought. But, you know, when you step back and take a pause and, you know, if she did have something to do with it, she's a, she's a miserable person. She's, she's a miserable person because a person that is clothed in their right mind would never want to hurt a child. You know, and what does that say about your relationship with your own daughter? You hate your own daughter that much that you would have her best friend killed? You know the love that your daughter had for my daughter. So this is why I don't lash out in anger and and frustration anymore doesn't mean that I'm not angry but I'm going to use that for good I'm not going to use it to repay evil with evil or hatred with hatred I'm going to use it for the good of others and for elevating myself and everyone in my sphere of influence. So that's all I got for y'all today. But I thank everyone who took the time to join me. Um, it doesn't matter if you're a seasoned listener or if today was your first time stumbling upon the podcast. I thank you for being here and taking the time to listen. You know, time is a precious commodity. And um, I'm thankful for the 14 years that I got to spend with my daughter. And I'm thankful that you take the time to come here to spend with me. No matter if you are here every day or if you just come every now and again, I appreciate you. You know, I'm grateful for your support, whether you just stop by to listen and you have no intention of listening ever again. Thank you. Whether you're a monthly supporter, thank you. Or if you're a faithful YouTube subscriber, thank you. I appreciate every single one of you, you know. Um, if this is your first time listening, though, please let me know. If you are listening on Amazon, Anchor, Apple, Breaker, Google Podcasts, Pocket Casts, Radio Public, Spotify, or YouTube. I would love to know where you guys are joining me from. Because I appreciate you and I want to, you know, even though it's virtual, you know, I want to respond to you. I want to 
send you a hug emoji. You know what I'm saying? Like, I thank you for being here. You know, um, you know, I said before, um, Aaliyah's death, you know, I'm going to continue what I'm doing because I was doing this. This is who I was before Aaliyah's death. You know, this is who I was in Aaliyah's life, you know, and I made certain commitments to myself before she even died, you know, that I would do, I would start doing TikTok live every single day. And I'm going to stick to my commitment because I haven't always been that type of person. You know, I'm going to continue to honor my commitments, even in grief, you know, and yeah, I'm going to continue to do podcasts. I'm going to continue to post to my YouTube channel. I'm going to continue to make motivational videos because that's who I am. I'm here to motivate and inspire and encourage people on their own journey of self-love and healing. And from time to time, <clears throat> I have clients that, you know, want to get a sound bath, that who want to receive the energy therapy. And that's why I have a Mother's Touch LLC, you know. Um, but if you t enjoyed today's episode, then I invite you to become a YouTube subscriber. Or if you feel called to support this podcast monthly, I invite you to become a listener supporter. You know, and there's tiers. You can be, you can uh, support at 99 cents a month, 4.99 a month, or 9.99 a month. And you know, if you're just somebody who listens and you're just like, you know what? I feel your pain at this time, and I just want to send you something. Then. We definitely accept love offerings, um, and we accept that via Cash App, PayPal, or Venmo, and all the links are listed in the description box below. And again, all acts of love, kindness, support, and generosity are greatly appreciated and accepted. And that's exactly why I um, created Aaliyah's Legacy of Love. But first, A Mother's Touch LLC is a small business that's dedicated to restoring the confidence of the child, adolescent, and adult whose confidence was wounded and broken due to trauma and psychological abuse. And we do this through confidence restoration classes um, and energy therapy using crystals and sound. And you know, the confidence restoration classes are with the um, 30 days to a healthier, more confident version of you workbook journal. Um, we will start classes again in March. Um, but what we do is we assist our clients with restoring or rebuilding the confidence they need to succeed mentally, emotionally, spiritually, physically, relationally, and financially. And the end goal is to free their mind from the psychological pain of their past that's preventing them from walking in their unique divine light. And uh, Aaliyah's Legacy of Love is a foundation that I created in memory of my beautiful angel Aaliyah who was killed on Halloween um, this year 2022 and um, the purpose of the foundation really is to spread love joy and kindness 24 days uh, 24 7 365 days a year and that can be you know paying it forward in the Starbucks McDonald's line uh, pumping some, you know, paying for somebody's gas at the gas station, um, you know, leaving an encouraging post on your social media, um, sending an encouraging text to somebody, um, giving a compliment to a stranger, you know, buying a candy bar or a snack for the cashier at the grocery store because, you know, they standing on their feet eight hours a day and, and, and customer service, you know, just just really showing kindness for no fucking reason at all because it costs absolutely nothing to be kind to other people and when you do this every single day your life begins to change your outlook on life begins to change and you begin to foster a higher vibrational energy of love you know and, you know, the foundation will provide the tools, resources, and support that our communities need to eradicate the vicious and endless cycle of ancestral hate that perpetuates us to hurt, harm, and physically abuse our children. That's the purpose of the foundation. That's the mission. I'm tired. We have to stop passing down ancestral hate
because that <clears throat> that ancestral hate that's ingrained in our roots inside of our DNA is what continues to perpetuate hurt, harm, and psychologically abuse of children. So that's what <clears throat> Aaliyah's legacy of love is. Um, I should have the website up. I'm hoping by this week I should have the address um, for y'all to send new and gently used teenage clothing because I am um, I will have an attic where um, teens can come and shop for school or you know spring clothing or whatever I don't know it you know if I have a, an enormous outpouring of clothing then I just might be like you know what if you need you know new outfits you know every season come get them you know what I'm saying so I don't know how it's gonna pan out I'm, I'm believing that God is just gonna bless this abundantly um you know, and um, on the website, there is a place for you to actually donate, you know, um, to, to send donations in support of paying it forward or sponsorships or, you know, if you just want to donate, you know, to the mission and the purpose of Aaliyah's Legacy of Love. Um, and if you struggle with freeing your mind from the psychological pain of your past, feeling mentally healthy and you're ready to experience the restorative and transformative power of self-love, then I encourage you to purchase your copy of the 30 Days to a Healthier, More Confident Version of You Workbook Journal today. I created this unique 30-day process as a tool to help guide you through 30 days of cultivating a greater love for yourself, um, which ultimately you will have a greater love for others right like I said before it all starts with self <laughs> that's how that's why people don't love other people because they don't even love themselves. but that's another topic for another day um, but this guide is guaranteed to assist you with walking in your unique divine light and will help you experience exponential growth that lasts and I say exponential growth because there was a time on my journey where I spent two years you know living in the light and then I went back to the darkness you know what I'm saying this has been the most consistent journey of my entire life you know and I can faithfully say that I have been sober for five and a half months so or five and a half years excuse me um, but the 30-day workbook journal is now available for purchase on Amazon through our website or through our Instagram and Facebook shops and you receive an exclusive workbook package including a zoom invitation link to join the next workbook guidance class when you purchase the workbook from our website and you know if you're like you know what I really do want to purchase the workbook journal, but I can't afford it. Then subscribe to our monthly self-care newsletter and receive a complimentary MP3 download of the self-love affirmation meditation. And you'll also receive a subscriber only discount of 10%. So maybe that'll encourage you to purchase the workbook journal package off of our website. And I am extending that. I did say that it would expire um, November 25th, but actually, you know what? I might just take it out until, um, the end of January um, because I'm not holding any classes until March so but um, go ahead and take advantage of that discount it's a 55% discount right now on the website um, the regular package costs $99 but I'm offering it for $44.55 I think it is or something like that $44.55 or something like that but um, if you are a mother who's interested in receiving supportive resources and encouragement on your journey of self-love and healing, then I invite you to join a Mother's Touch LLC single mother empowerment community on Facebook. You'll receive encouraging posts, free downloads, product discounts, a monthly self-care newsletter, and so much more. So if you join the single mother empowerment community, it's kind of like subscribing, but not really. Um, um, but you wouldn't have to subscribe to the monthly newsletter and then you'll get, you know, the encouraging post and all that other good stuff. So, um, I love y'all and I thank y'all for joining me today and thank y'all for being here with me through this time of grieving. Um, but y'all know, before I let you go, I have got to send y'all out of here with our self-love affirmation. So let's go ahead and do that. I love me. I am enough. I am worthy. I am appreciated. I am approved. I am amazing. I am all powerful. I am all knowing. I am content. I am beautiful. I am unlimited. I am abundant. I am passionate. 
I am compassionate. I am fearless. I am lovable. I am blessed. I am grounded. I am love. I am a creator. I am limitless. I am wise. I am happiness. I am a masterpiece. I am peace. I am prosperous. I am wealthy. I am healed. I am whole. I am complete. I am positive. I am a goddess. I am divine. I am a light to the world. I am a giver. I am selfless. I am courageous. I am faithful. I am empathetic. I am talented. I am intellectual. I am intuitive. I am aware. I am valued. I am respected. And I love me. I am the almighty governing presence of my life and my world. And I am a self-sustaining, harmonious, well, and healthy being which carries me through everything. Everything that confronts me. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I love you. Thank you. Follow me on TikTok at A Mother's Touch LLC for my live stream of energy therapy beginning at noon Eastern Standard Time, Monday through Friday. Before you go, like this video, hit the subscribe button, and don't forget to watch the next video.